It's gonna be alright. Don't worry. Be happy. It's going to be alright. There's another baby. Oh, that's too much. Yeah. Welcome to Tangier. This is where the Atlantic Ocean meets the Mediterranean Ocean. Let's explore. Welcome to Africa. Okay, I need to tell you the lore of a house. So long ago, this person from America and this person from Greece got married. Well, the lady had asthma. And the dude was like, hey, I have an idea to cure your asthma. I'm going to buy the best place in Morocco and build you a house with eucalyptus trees and paths so you don't get lost when you go walk outside with your asthma. Well, even though Greece has a very similar climate to where we're at right now in Morocco, he bought this huge house and built it. Well, after a while, she got kidnapped. So his plan of keeping his wife safe and protected in the eucalyptus trees kind of failed. Oh well, he ended up with a house here, which is pretty baller. And today, no one lives there. It's now a museum full of painting and art. So how cool. What once was a semi-hospital where someone got kidnapped it is now a museum. I'm gonna take a drive through the city. Come with me and explore. The city is so cool. Tangier has been inhabited for thousands of years, dating back before Phoenician times. Greeks, Romans, Byzantines, Spanish, Portuguese all settled here at some time. And here thrives one of the most beautiful arrangements of architecture I've seen in a city to date. Strategically located next to the Strait of Gibraltar, it's a cultural melting pot of both African and European influences. Islam, Christianity, and Judaism are the three religions that practice in peace here together. Along with that, Arabic, Berber, and either French or English are the three languages that everyone here speaks fluently. And as we were driving in the car, we ended up going outside of town a little bit, and I was just looking at the scenery and everything around here. Look how pretty it is, and the sea view. And then all of a sudden, my driver started to pull over, and well, yeah, just look at what happened. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hello, I'm good. How are it's you? Good. You find you happy? Yes. Okay. No worry. <laughs> Be happy. Everything is good. Be, Be alright. Don't oh, worry. This Be is happy. Baby. It's good tomorrow. <laughs> what you want? There's another baby. Oh, that's too much. Yeah. Okay. Come here. No, no. This is what I'm doing. Uh, oh. Go ahead. Okay, here? Yes, like a horse. Okay. Yes, please. Go. Lap. Move forward, move forward. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Stand up. Oh, no, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, enjoy it. Okay. Can I give you this phone? Yes, I don't okay. want to lose it. Yeah, I'm going to. Can I use it, please? We're on a camel! <laughs> yeah! We're going to see the baby camels. And the best way to cross the road is on a camel. So we can sneak up on them. Baby camel! Baby camel! Gonna be alright. <laughs> Don't worry. And that little camel's doing some yoga. Yoga camel. Don't worry. Be happy. Every day. Gonna be alright. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Every day. Gonna be alright. Gonna be alright. Now, after walking the camel, we must park the camel next to the baby camels. Set camel. Set camel. Be happy. Everything's gonna be alright. Gonna be alright. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Welcome to Morocco. Thank you so much. Hi, baby camel. Can I touch the baby camel? Hi, baby I camel. I give the one in case he bites. He bites me. Oh, yeah, nice. baby camel. Hi, baby camel. How are you? Do you want to be in the vlog? Baby camel wants to be famous. Oh. So long ago, there was this dude from Greece, again, named Hercules. Now, Hercules had 12 missions he had to do. I don't remember them all, but maybe you do, so drop a comment. Now, the 11th mission, he used his miraculous strength to separate Africa from Europe. And we're going to see the cave that he went into and chilled out for his retirement after he finished all 12 missions. Now Morocco's great and Tangier's even more amazing. So how cool would it be to come here after you finish all of the hard work and just chill out? So this is Hercules Cave. Hercules Cave is one of the biggest tourist attractions in Tangier. There's so many things to do in here. There's music, there's art shows, there's a bunch of stuff. But I want to show you something else. Found another cave to go into. Now, while this cave doesn't have as much historical significance as a Hercules cave, it was pretty cool because inside here there were so many different Berbers doing all sorts of cool stuff. There were things for sale, there was live music, there was parrots, there was birds, there was art, there was original doors, there were so many cool artifacts. We're going down to see the famous band and the parrot. But first, take a look at these original Berber doors. Wanna go and play with them? So my legendary tour guide encouraged me to go sit with the Berbers, wear a cool hat, and sing along with them for a little bit. But I didn't know the words, so I just kind of shook my hands like Morocco, since that's about all I know how to do. And the guys next to me were making funny faces and sticking their tongues out at me, and it was a lot of fun. But then, after a while, it got really loud. Like, really loud. So, I made some faces back at them, and it's time to explore the rest of the cave. So the idea was for me to actually narrate inside the cave, but listening to the audio, it's way too loud. Like this band was epic and my microphone catches everything. So inside the cave, there was all these really pretty water fixtures. Now they're not natural, but who cares? It was awesome. And you can see all sorts of little relics of how the Berbers lived um, and everything in here, like every uh, Berber's doing a little hustle. So everything costs a little bit of money. It's not a lot, but if you want to go take a picture with a parrot, you know, it's like five dirhams. If you want to go put on some shoes, in the floor, it's about five turns. I just really found it fun and interesting to enjoy the energy and the vibe of the cave. And of course, inside it was cool. So that was awesome, staying out of the sun for just a little bit. Let's go see what's next. We've gotten a Moroccan breakfast. Now take a look at this. What? We have some oil, we have orange juice, coffee, and delicious assortment. We're going to try this thingy in this thingy and see what it is. Almond butter, with some honey, and some sort of oil in it. Okay, let's try this one now. Okay, and now we've done some of possibly the corn cake with possibly poutine cheese curds. And it's not poutine, and it's way better. Okay, so as you know, the Strait of Gibraltar, there's a billion ships that go through there all the time. Now, there's also been a lot of wars and there's been a lot of ship crashes. So, what happens is they installed this lighthouse. Now, this lighthouse was built in 1864. Lighthouse! And it tells who can go and what can go. And it basically is a traffic light for the Strait of Gibraltar. 
So not only is it a lighthouse, it's also a farmer. I'm glad you asked why. Because the dude who owns it's a Berber and they're farmers. So he was like, hey, sure, of course I'll man your lighthouse, but I'm also gonna have my farm. So homeboy lives there and takes care of all of these tourists and eats off of the land and ships from the water. I mean, fishes from the water. How do I get a life like that? Welcome to the Gosh Bar. Rock the Gosh Bar. Rock the Gosh Bar. We've entered the Gosh Bar. Now there's five gates to get in here and we just entered the first one. Let's look. The Kashba was the fortress in Tangier that was built in the 15th century to defend Tangier from baddies. Now it's housed the most significant people of both past and present in here. And I don't know all these famous people, so we're just gonna skip that part. But it's also housed a bunch of Moroccan kings, playwrights, authors, and artists. Let's go explore this place. Guys, we found graffiti. Look at this. So here we have a nice picture of the Kashba and the ship that we came on and the port and the Strait of Gibraltar. I'll always find art. Look at these doors. I found art. I had to. I had to stop. Can I walk down there? Yeah. Look how pretty this is. So the buildings are so close to each other because it actually keeps out the heat. So here we have a little humidity, but very little heat. It's so nice and cool in here. All of these doors are blue and they're so pretty. So why blue? Well, blue was one of the actual colors of Morocco for a while. See the Moroccan flag? Edit the Moroccan flag here. It used to be blue and then it turned out to be white and now it's red. And the red represents the Arab colors, the green represents the Islamic color. So that's why you see a red and green flag. We've reached the other side of this door. I should probably go back because my tour guide is on the other side. Say hi to the tour guide. What is this? It's a fountain. Oh. Well, that's pretty. And it's also all handmade, like puzzles. The mosaics, mosaics yeah. Puzzles, put them together to get the design. The work of plaster. The wow. Natural color. Okay, so now we've exited the Kashba, the Puertas, obviously. And we're going to the Medina. Now the Medina was built like in the 14th and 15th century. So it's pretty old. Let's go explore and see what's down there. I hear cool music, which means it just has to be even cooler. Let's go! The Medina is a vibrant maze of narrow streets filled with bustling artists, hustlers, historic landmarks, and of course, traditional Moroccan architecture offering a captivating glimpse into the city's rich cultural heritage. Check out that mosaic. Okay, it's already cool. Okay, in front of us is the place that Jason Bourne had jumped off from. Oh, Jason Bourne. He's running away. <laughs> So pretty. And the walls over here. And there's very pretty crafts here. And this is one of the oldest mosques in town. Look how pretty it is. 
So right now we're standing in the place of what used to be spies and government and everything else. Next to the spies and governments behind us sits what used to be the first bank. So we're gonna go inside and see how cool it is. There were so many fresh fruits and spices and vegetables. It smelled so good. There were kids running up and down the aisle. And basically, the markets are open until they sell out of everything. So these people still had stuff to sell. They were open. Is anyone else getting flashbacks to Riga? Because this looks really a lot like the market they have there by the port. This is so cool. <laughs> We are now entering a Jewish cemetery. Now we've been to English cemeteries. We've been to Scottish cemeteries. We haven't been to a Jewish one yet. So let's go to a Jewish cemetery in Morocco. Hola. Smile. Oh, you just want to go for a walk. Okay, let's go for a walk. Show me your house. Guys, we have a tour guide at the cemetery. His name is... Mohammed. Mohammed, take us for a walk. So in Jewish culture, whenever you visit a grave, unlike we do in other religions, you stick a rock on the tombstone. I think that's much more efficient and economical than sticking live plants on the tombstone. So you can see all of these are from very loved people who have been visited soon. In this graveyard, many prominent rabbis and other Jewish leaders are buried. And I think it's really cool that the city of Tangier recognizes all three religions. So these are the newer graves around us, and it's likely that there's people buried underneath here. And I'm gonna overlay it because right here we see the older graves. Now the older graves date back to the 14th century. So this place has been around for, I, don't know, I can't do math this late in the day and this hot and this dehydrated. It's like 800 years, 700 years, 600 years. This is so, so cool, you guys, look. So these are newer graves, they're raised again. Okay guys, we're now walking up to a new gate to get back into the Kashba. Now this gate is called the Gate of the Americans, or Bob Murrican. Bob Murrican. Bob Murrican. Why is it called this? Well, back in 1777, Morocco was the first country to recognize the United States as a country. See, in 1776, the U.S. declared independence from Britain. Now, while Britain didn't recognize that until 1814, Morocco did. Why? I don't know. That's history, and I don't know that part. But there's a huge American embassy here, used to be here, and now it's a museum. So now we're going to go take a look. So this is the American litigation. And it was the first embassy outside of the U.S. whenever the U.S. declared themselves a country. Dun -dun. I found a cool street to go down. So let's go see where it leads. Can you hear my water? Okay, so I saw this street and I was like, hey, let's go down it. And my tour guide was like, let's go. Cat pile, cuddle pile, oh look, 
Okay, so I have to tell you something really cool. So there's these large bottles of yellow liquid. What are they? Well, some people don't want the cats around and basically it's just saffron oil. So you put saffron on your doorstep and the cats will stay away because they hate it. So right now we're standing in front of the synagogue, which today is closed. But I think it's super cool that we can see like an English church, and a mosque and a synagogue, like literally all within a kilometer of each other. In fact, it's why in Morocco, on top of every mosque, you see the three balls. The three balls represent the three religions that are recognized here. Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. This is a very cool city. We have parrots. Hi! Hi guys! Oh no, one more cake and I'll parrots! Okay, so I wasn't really hungry, but I was really thirsty and tired from walking around everywhere, so we decided to go to lunch. I'm gonna walk up these stairs that had all of these seamstresses going on, and then through this really beautiful fabric market with a bunch of stuff to buy. And then we entered the place that I was gonna have lunch at, and I was led to my table, and then, okay, so we walked all over the market. I found some super amazing things. Is it expensive? Is it very cool? Yeah. Um, and now we're in a restaurant. I'm gonna have lunch, but take a look at this restaurant. We have some nice artwork, some nice seating, some nice people eating. Now this place used to be an old house. So the bottom floor is where the family would live, and then the son would live a floor up, and then the daughter a floor up. Or maybe the daughter was middle and the son was top. I don't know. So I will show you my meal as it comes. I got a big water. We have some soup. We have delicious bread. And then we have some sauces. So we have aubergine, we have lentils, we have some olives, we have some maybe spicy pimento. And then we have tuna salad. Bunk a bunk bunk. So it's sweet and salty. And I have spicy here. So I think I'm gonna go like spicy, sweet, and salty. That sounds good. It's really spicy, so we're just doing a little. It's pretty good. Guys, we're turning into the food channel. There's lamb tagine. And then we have chicken. Okay. So I've done a terrible job at cleaning my food. It was so good. And they're gonna try to bring me fruit now and tea. No, no more fruit. I need no more. <laughs> I am so ready to go explore. The city is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, let's see what's next. We've been summoned to the terrace. So, the very top of this restaurant, my hair, it's a pretty cool view. So, we're climbing a beautiful staircase. We're getting our steps in for the day. Hello. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you guys, this place is amazing. Look at this. What is my life? Look at. This is the coolest thing ever. Take a look. Now, no trip to Tangier is complete without a visit to Cafe Baba. Cafe Baba offers a alternative lifestyle and a variety of products to smoke. You may have seen it in a recent Anthony Bourdain episode of Tangier. So let's go in and do it my way and maybe just have a sweet tea instead of a, a smoke. Not so long ago, some very famous people decided to have a little party in this place for it. And you can see a photo of all of them. Cool. We've now exited the Kosh Bar. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.
Ciao. No worry. See you soon. Have a great day. Gonna be alright. Don't worry. Be happy. Have a great day. Don't be alright. Don't worry. Don't be alright. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and see you next time. <laughs>